Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're gonna make a simple limited supply card, but it's kind of interesting because we have this little cutaway here. I'm using a watercolor card, but you can fold watercolor paper if you want to, or even use a heavy cardstock. I think it'll be just fine with this technique, but I will share some differences if you're using cardstock versus watercolor paper. I'm using a bunch of different stamps from our sponsor, Artneco.com, and anytime you order from Artneco, mention the Frugal Crafter because you'll get 10% off your order or free shipping if your order's over $50. Whichever discount is greater is the one they'll give you. But I just got this stamp set and I wanted to try it out. I thought this was a really pretty collage in and of itself here, but then when I started to look at the other elements here, I realized that they'd all go really well together to create a um, kind of a larger collage. And then I also took some flowers from uh, another new release of theirs, and I'll link everything down below so you can find it easily, um, because I really liked how this flower could fill in, and then I had some other single flowers from that set, and the single flower from this set, and I was able to piece it all together, so I had just a scene that opened up to another scene. And you'll notice in the background I used uh, more saturated, deeper colors, and in the foreground I used softer colors. Uh, so the first thing we need to do is stamp this card. And um, I also decorated a little envelope to match. And it's so much easier to stamp your envelope before you put your card in there. I wouldn't color this with a wet media though if you have it on the flap just because it could moisten the glue and seal your envelope shut before you're ready for it. But we'll go into all that later. So the first thing you need is a watercolor card or a piece of watercolor paper that is 10 inches by seven inches. And what I'm gonna do before I even fold it is I am gonna do the stamping for the inside of the card. So I'm gonna do that. Um, right here actually because whenever you have a pre-scored card you want to look at the bump the side that has the bump that's the inside you always want to fold on the bumps so you're folding it on the dent side the dent side is out when you're folding just just for future reference you'll get a much neater card that way and we're going to start with this stamp here which is our big background and because i'm going to be watercoloring i am going to use archival ink by ranger you can use whatever waterproof ink you have though i don't like to use stays on on watercolor paper because i find that it's just not juicy enough to really get in there and get in the little divots. This is a pre-made watercolor card, so it's using cold pressed paper, which has a little more texture than the hot pressed paper I generally use for stamping. So I just wanted to let you know. And because I haven't put cushion on this, I am using a curved mount. This is a rock -a block uh, by Crafters Companion, and I really like these for that use. So I've turned my card so I can rock away from me. That's how I like to do it. It's a little more comfortable for me. And I'm going to start by stamping this right here. And I like to go slow because I want to make sure my ink has time to transfer. Another thing you might want to have handy is a black fine tip pen, like a Sharpie, something waterproof. In case your pen, your uh, stamp lines skip anywhere, you can go in and fill them in with a pen. So after I've got that, I want to start adding some, um, some floral elements. And you can see here I've got some of these bigger... Um, these bigger plants, these bigger branches, and you want to put your biggest things in first anytime you're stamping because it's easier to fit things in that way. It's so much easier to go in with these little stamps later and fill it in. So I'm using this branch. Now I'm on a flat block here. Uh, this is such an open line work design that I don't have to have the curved block and it should still stamp pretty well for me. And I think I'm going to put this on, I think I'll put this on a couple times. I'm going to do one here. See? transfers really really well and what I'm working on here is just a um, like a kids pad of newsprint that I picked up at the dollar store I like that I can just tear it off and have a fresh sheet underneath anytime I want you can also stamp on a phone book or an old magazine as well I think I'll just turn this one a little bit so it's not going the exact same way and put that right there and I could even do it again if I wanted to maybe mm, I don't know if I want to I think that might be a little much now I'm gonna do some of these single flowers on their own I don't want her to be kind of cut off halfway. I think that looks a little artificial, so um, I'll probably do a little masking there just to um, make her seem a little bit more integrated there. I might not need to. I might just be able to put a few right in there. I keep my masks, though. Anytime I bother to cut masks out for any stamps, I put them right in an envelope and slide it right in the page protector where I store my stamps, like this uh, sheet here. This is in, this goes in a clear page protector with all my stamps from this set. That way I can always find exactly what I need, any mask that I've already cut to go with it, just to save me more time uh, down the road when I'm stamping. So I find it really useful. So like those two bigger stamps, if I uh, bigger stamped images, if I want to mask them, all I have to do is reach in here and pull out my masks that are that size. 
sometimes it takes me a little bit of time just to figure out how they go because <laughs> once you've got once you're stamped over them a few times you can kind of you kind of lose the detail but they still will work just fine and like that and then I can go in you actually don't even have to have it perfect and it will still still work all right then I can go in with like this stamp and stamp it a couple times and I had a smaller cute little stamp that was with this set here I'm gonna stamp that on and just fill in um, wherever you want with your smaller stamps I kinda like to bring them up a little bit um, just to tie in these larger foreground objects and then the things further away. Now the benefit of putting these larger objects down here near the front is that it gives a depth to our piece. Now I'm going to go through with my pen because I, I want to make sure that I have a really good um, really good definition up here because like here in the hair I just want to make sure that I have enough dark lines so when I go to watercolor everything's going to look nice and crisp. You don't have to do too much and it can depend on how dry or wet your ink pad is, how much you need to do here. You can also, um, like if you need to extend the kimono or do something, you can do that with your pen. Just uh, anywhere you feel like you want to, if you want to draw a little branch, um, anything like that, you're more than welcome to do that with a pen. Or you can always paint it later, but I think that it does kind of help to unify everything. And you can even go with a, just a really loose light wash if you're going in and touching up with a pen too. So let's remove these masks, and there is the inside all stamped. I'll just bring it up a little bit so you can see. Now we need to do this cutaway part. So I need to remove my um, little pad there, and I'm going to show you how I'm going to cut out the interior piece here. Super easy. You can use whatever like oval cutter you have. I'm using this old um, Creative Memories one, and I have seen that they have come. They are back. You can like order replacement blades from them now. I have not ordered anything from them since they have. Um, have kind of come back on the scene, but um, it's kind of nice because I really love these tools. I've had these tools since the 90s, and um, and they don't fail, so <laughs> I really like that. And I can kind of just get a, get a guess here about where I want to put it. I could use my old one that I cut earlier as a guide. I just want to make sure we're going to be able to see some of her, uh, but, there, but not everything. I want it to kind of reveal away. Okay, so... You can use whatever you have. You could trace a plate and cut it out with scissors. It honestly does not matter one bit what you're using for a tool here. Just wanted to stress that. But a lot of times we forget about some really awesome tools that we have in our stash because they've kind of fallen out of favor or nobody's using them anymore. So we forget like the old colossals or whatever you might have. And um, and it's nice to dig them out and give them some new use. Then you feel good about keeping them. You gotta feel good about what you're hoarding, right? <laughs> That's what I think. All right, so now I am going to grab my stamping paper again and I'm gonna flip this over. <clears throat> because this is the front side so this is where I want to stamp now so again I'm gonna go in first with my most dominant objects so let's ink up this stamp here this is the uh, beautiful bird with a branch and some flowers on it a little calligraphy it's a really lovely stamp kind of um, this is pretty enough that you could actually use that on a card all by itself now when you're using these curved stamp mounts um, the rocket blocks you want to make sure there's no ink on the rails you can be messy and get ink all over here, but you got to make sure there's none on the rails. Otherwise, that will like get on your card. And I'm going to, again, turn my card. So this is the top side up here. And I am going to stamp my bird right here. I'm going to go slow. I like to put my fingers in the middle just to make sure I'm getting a lot of pressure on the middle as I go, especially on watercolor paper. And there we've got a really nice design. Again, this is cold press watercolor paper, so I have to really push on this. If you're using hot press or using cardstock, it's, uh, it's a little bit easier. And then I want to put this uh, pretty sentiment here. Then I'll show you here on the finished card. It says, give every day light... Give every day the chance to become the most beautiful of your life. I think that's a really pretty sentiment. And that's going to go right along here. And this could be an anytime card. I like anytime cards because, you know, you expect cards on your birthday. But you get an anytime card and it's like, oh, it's just it's just nice. I, I like that. And again, turning the card sideways, making sure that my stamp is right side up. Because, you know, you're looking at your stamps and they're backwards. Um, you know, so, so it can be a little tricky. And I'm just going to slowly roll that on there okay now 
I need to trim the stamp closer. I didn't really trim it close enough, but I thought this was a good teachable moment because it happened on the other one too. But I thought this would be good because I can show you how to deal with that. So I've got one, two, three ink smudges there. So what I'm gonna do is use some of these filler stamps. Oops, I, and I stuck my finger in there, so I gotta be careful. Gotta be careful I don't stick that on my uh, on my nice white background. But that's a great thing about watercoloring is that we can cover up any of those um, those mistakes there. We can just by adding our wash of water, you're not really gonna notice. And I just tried to kind of <laughs> stamp this down so maybe the edge of something would catch my little mistake line. And I'm gonna use this little Sakura flower. We'll put that right over there. I love to collage images together because it gives you that creativity. Sometimes you can feel like maybe, well, I'm just stamping. It's not that creative. You know, you might feel bad because you're not drawing or you don't like to draw. Or you don't know how to draw. This is very creative. You take a bunch of images that are on their own and they're beautiful on their own, but you, you make something completely different than nobody else has made when you collage them together. And I think that's really special. And I think that's, that's part of the stamping hobby that a lot of people don't do nowadays um, because everything, you know, is almost so planned out a lot of times um, that they miss the beautiful things that you can make and the creativity that you can um, that you can use when you mix your different images together. I just really like that. Now I want to stamp on the edge here, but I don't want to get the back dirty. So what I'm going to do is fold my card now. And here you can see how we're going to be able to see both parts of our card. I fold the card. I'm going to use my bone folder because I, I like to have a nice sharp fold there. Even though it comes pre-folded, I like to add a sharp fold. And I'm going to stamp um, that branch again. When I have a big stamp, I like to pick up my ink pad and put the ink pad to the stamp. When I've got a little stamp, I can just stamp it on the ink pad. It's um, a little easier that way. And I'm going to put this right in here. And maybe I'll do... And since I'm just inking a part of it, I just brought that over to the stamp pad. There, we'll get that in there. And then if we need anything else to fill, we can go ahead and do that too. And then I like to scatter a few just so that I don't have a chunk, a chunk, a chunk. I want to bridge them a little bit. And of course, you don't have to put quite so much in there, but I, I just think it's nice to kind of let everything flow together. So the next thing we're going to do is our coloring. So let me clean up this mess and get my watercolors and we'll color together. If you want to stamp on your envelope, do this first before you clear away all your stamps. I like to do the stamp over the flap. It's pretty and um, it's very simple and it kind of gives your recipient the uh, hint of what might be inside. So I'm just going to ink up this little, it's a pretty little um, framed image. It comes with that set. Again, I'll link everything up down below. And I just want to make sure I have it right side up. And I'm turning my card again, and I'm just going to stamp it right along the edge of the envelope. So then when I close it, I have a nice full image there. And this is a single layer card, so we don't have to worry about things um, not closing right. It's not going to be lumpy or bumpy or cost extra postage. And then just to um, have a little decoration on the back, I'm going to just stamp this a couple times. Um, I didn't want to put that framed image on the back because I didn't want to confuse anybody thinking it was postage or anything. So um, I'll just put that there. This is still that same waterproof ink, so we can do a little bit of water coloring on top. Your envelopes are going to be thinner material, so they're more likely to buckle. So you want to go really easy with any sort of water coloring. And I wouldn't water color this part just because it might seal your envelope shut before you're ready to use it. All right, so now we're going to clear this up and we're going to start watercoloring. Okay, so I got my watercolors out. I've cleaned up my mess. I've cleaned my stamps and put them away. Honestly, I really have them, not just like shoving them over to the side. I'm telling you the truth. I cleaned them and put them in my binder. I'm so good today. Um, and I'm just going to kind of go through some of these techniques step by step. I don't know if we'll paint the whole thing together because it's pretty easy. Um, and it might be quite dull to watch me do it. But um, first thing I want you to notice is the intensity difference. So on the inside, we have more intense colors. We have all this place over here to write. So we don't have to worry that much. You could even, um, they could even write up here if you wanted to. Uh, basically, I just want to have some contrast between the dark colors in here or the more intense colors and the softer, more pastel colors on the front. So the first thing we're going to do is, um, I like to do the inside first because we have a lot more space here. And I think maybe I'll just move this over so you can see both parts. 
and I like to start with the background and I am going to use a number six round or number eight round rather if you want a tighter look use a smaller brush I want if you want to go faster and you want a looser look use a bigger brush and I'm just gonna wet a little bit of the paper there it's not really that important you wet it um, if you're not gonna pre-wet then you want to make sure you have a nice um, juicy puddle of cerulean blue or whatever blue you want to use and these are student grade paints you could use anything you could use um, any paint that you bought for scrapbooking you can use the kids watercolors it really doesn't matter when you're doing a this is like doing an ink wash whenever you're doing like a line and wash technique whether you have hand drawn it or you've rubber stamped it um, it's very forgiving and I almost think that when you have a really detailed image that having a loose watercolor actually is prettier um, but it's completely up to you if you feel that this is too loosey-goosey and you would rather have a more detailed image then go in with a smaller brush take your time um, enjoy the process you should enjoy it and paint it however brings you joy okay don't feel like you have to do it just like I do I'm, I know I paint much looser than most people do and uh, and that's okay because that's how I like to do it okay so we got our sky wash in there um, if you want to have any any darker areas you can go ahead and just kind of drop it in and the nice thing about doing that and letting it dry is when you have a lot of wet paint down there and it dries it will settle in the texture of the paper and give you some really cool um, kind of granulation effects and since we have a one layer card here having any of those extra uh, granulating effects is going to look uh, more interesting because it is just a flat one layer card now I want to have some purples in this mountain we have this like pagoda up on the top of the mountain I think that's what it's called um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that same blue I'm gonna add some rose to it or like a deep pink magenta anything in that kind of ballpark will be good and I don't care if it mixes with my sky a little bit just because things further away tend to be fuzzy so if you're not if you don't take my painting classes um, my free painting classes that I have all the time on my channel that's okay because I'm gonna repeat a lot of that stuff here so if you do take my painting classes this may seem a little redundant but there are a lot of beginner stampers that, that don't paint that are taking that take the stamp school classes here so I want to make sure that this serves everybody so feel free to you know speed this up with a little gear at the bottom of the player if you're uh, if you've heard this before and you don't want to hear it again and I like to vary my color as I go. I hope that's not glaring for you too much. This, and this technique is a wash because we're just kind of really filling in a big area with wet juicy paint. Now I want to darken this up a little bit because I need the intensity of the inside of my card a little darker than the outside so it will stand out really well. And I am going to grab some um, indigo which is honestly kind of like a grayish blue. It's almost like a Payne's gray. You could use a Payne's gray if you don't have the uh, indigo and I'm going to add some more of that rose to it. Okay so we're getting a like a richer purple because we're, instead of that, that light kind of pastel cerulean we have that darker indigo and I'm going up against where I've already painted so the colors can kind of meld together <clears throat> excuse me and pulling my color down uh, again if you want the detail going with a smaller brush that's totally fine do whatever is, uh, is best for you and then after we've gotten a little ways down with that color I want to mix in some Viridian green or Thalo green, any sort of really bright green. If you're using your kids Crayolas for this, that's totally fine, totally awesome. Prang is a really great um, inexpensive brand too. If, you, if you're looking for something that's, that you just want to use on cards once in a while, take some of that Viridian, put it in there. It's going to give me a nice um, blackish green as it mixes with the indigo and the rose. Add that in there too. Now, because I'm using a student grade paint, it is not going to flow as much as like an artist grade paint, but that's all right because I don't really want it flowing out of control. I might want to go right into next to something else and paint it, and I find it's a little bit easier to work with for rubber stamping to have student grade paint versus an artist grade paint. Um, I feel like I can control the intensity a lot more easily, and... Um, and it just seems to work better and plus if you're using cardstock instead of watercolor paper and here's where I say that I'll tell you some 
um, some different techniques. If you're using watercolor paper, you don't. Um, if you're using cardstock, you do not want to use a lot of paint. In fact, I'd probably recommend if you want to use cardstock that you use um, watercolor pencils and a blender pen, not a water brush, but a blender pen. Stampin' Up makes them, and Tombow makes them. I can show you one. I got one right here. Um, and then you can spread your color watercolor pencils that way. I am going to be doing a big uh, free class here on watercolor pencils and um, different ways to use them, different brushes to use, how you can get different techniques. So if you're interested in that, let me know in the comments below. Um, it will be fairly soon, but I like these if you're working on cardstock just because you're not going to get so much water in it. Plus it contains like glycerin, I think, some sort of lubricant so it doesn't pill your paper. So um, you definitely don't want to get your cardstock as, wet, as watercolor paper because it won't hold up to it very well. So just continue on down the paper and fill in around all these little flowers. Okay, I've let the background dry, and now I'm just going to go through painting a few things I think might give you trouble if you haven't watercolored before, rather than going through every single thing because I think it would be a little um, a little redundant. So the first thing I want to talk about is this building back here. You can see I've used a lot of different colors. Um, the thing is, you want it, it's further in the background, so you want it to be less in focus, a little less detailed. So what I like to do is I'm actually going to mix up a color, and I'm going to mix up my rose, and I'm going to add some burnt sienna to it, which is a very red brown and that's going to give me um, a more like earthier warmer red and I'm going to go right in and I am going to just loosely paint in part of my um, my building here take more time uh, at home I'm just kind of this is my second one I'm just kind of putting in there quickly for you now after I've got that base color down, I can dry, dab my brush off on a towel, I can go and add the colors with very little water on my brush and just kind of dab them in, see if I can get a higher concentration. I think I want to have some yellow in there because the sun could be hitting it and it's kind of, uh, we kind of have a whimsical feel going on here. I don't have to worry about anything being really um, detailed. So I'm grabbing some yellow ochre because I know I'm going to use that elsewhere. It's kind of like a goldish color. You can use raw sienna if you don't have yellow ochre. They're very similar. Put that in there. It's pretty. And then I think just for a little bit of contrast, I want to put in some green. The same green that we used in the bottom. So what I like to do when I'm either, even if I'm just I'm doing a card or I'm painting a painting, it doesn't matter. I like to limit the amount of colors I use because I find that when I do that, my color, my my work seems much less chaotic. And especially if you have a lot of colors and a lot of loose, if you have a lot of loose brush strokes here. You don't want to introduce a bunch of um, a bunch of new colors at this point because it's going to be discordant. Now the other thing I want to show you was making the skin tone. So that yellow ochre color is is a very nice color to start off with for skin. So you want to take your yellow ochre, add a little bit of burnt sienna. And you can add water until you get the right color. Now I'm going to switch to a smaller brush because I have a much smaller area there. So I'll just grab this little one. This is like a size zero, I believe. Add in plenty of water there. And then I can go in and paint the skin. Now I want to give her a little bit of a blush. So I'm going to go in with that rose color. And I do like to tap it off on my palette a little bit so I don't get too much. Maybe mix that in a little bit with my skin color. And dab that in there. And that warms her complexion right up. It's a little now. If you get too much like I just did, dry your brush off on a paper towel and go in and you can wipe it away. And everything dries a little bit lighter, so you want to kind of um, account for that as you're working. And then don't forget to do her arms while you're at it with that same mix. Do it right while you have it out on your palette because. Um, you might have a difficult time mixing it again, especially after the face is dried, and then you try to go in and match the arms, and it's it's tough because you're trying to match wet paint to a paint that's dry, so you're more likely to get it too light. So that's how you want to do the skin. Now the other thing I wanted to show you, this is all going to be just filling in color. I decided I, I try to find things that will kind of contrast a little bit, like these birds in the sky. I'm going to do them with that yellow ochre because one, I've used it before, two, it's going to contrast nicely against the blue. And um, for the flowers, I like to be really loose with these. You can be um, much tighter with these. And in fact, if you do not like the watercolor technique, you could do this on a smooth blending card stock and do it in what color it with water with um I'm sorry, alcohol pens. Do whatever you want. I like to go through here and just kind of wet it with like a really light wash uh, and a big brush. 
And then what I'll do is I'll go in and I'll pick up the darker colors and just drop them in and let them let them kind of float around there just to give me a little bit of um, movement and a difference in color and like a two-tone effect. And that uh, the peachy color is made with the yellow ochre and the rose and I just think that's kind of a pretty color and it's tying the things together throughout the scene. Now I might use the pink just on its own up here just to give it a little pop against the background and because that pink on its own is cooler when I added the yellow ochre it's warmer and warmer things come forward and they just help with the depth and uh, with this scene we've got these larger flowers in front they're obviously closer to us down at the bottom of the card as we go up the page things get smaller so it gives us that depth that we want so that's um, so this collage these stamps work really well for collaging because of that these particular stamps that we're using together here like this but go go back in fill in everything pick your colors for the kimono and um, it also helps if you you know really take really pay attention and around the hair you might want to go in with your pen and fill in any areas that have skipped and then we're going to go to the outside of the card which is there and again I am just going to flip this over um, I'm not going to worry about this one because I have this other one for you to see. But flipping that over, you can see our colors are much lighter here. I'm going to start off again with a light blue wash. Much washier, much lighter this time. Lots of water there. I'm getting the blue on my palette. Now the nice thing about not pre-wetting your paper is that it's going to dry quicker. And you just, uh, I find that if I keep one edge wet, if I keep working and I don't leave that edge al alone, kind of just sitting there too long, and I just always keep adding color right at the last edge that I touched. I don't get any hard, weird lines. I can control it quite a bit. And if I get any puddles, I can dry my brush off and I can go right back up and I can drink that water right out of there. And this is such a, uh, this goes real quick because it's such a light wash and if you get any in your flowers it's not a big deal because it is such a light wash now we can tell already that I use darker paint there because they're about the same right now and this one is still wet so I know it's going to dry um, that's going to dry lighter and it's up to you you make it as lighter or as dark as you want but I just wanted to point that out that was darker when I painted it this is going to dry lighter than that in fact let's let me just show you about how dark that paint was paint was probably about like this when I painted it on just so you can see like the color shift this so this dark fades to about that dark and these are Cotman watercolors you could use whatever like the Ganzai Tambes would work really well for this because they don't flow that much so they would kind of stay where you put them and I do like to use a big brush when I want to cover a large area but that's completely up to you so you are going to do your flowers the same way we did on the inside you know put a light wash on them and then dab in some darker color if you want to now if you want to have any of these blended colors here into the background from the flowers, you'll want to paint the flowers now while the background is still wet. Um, it's the same technique, just wet them with a lighter color, drop in some yellows, drop in some darker pinks if you want to. I did not add the yellow into the pink. I left the pink kind of on its own just to give it a fresher, lighter color than I had on the inside of the card. But that is completely up to you. But I did want to show you how we did the bird um, because the rest of the painting here is just the same as what we did on the inside. And what we're going to do is we're going to go into that Viridian Green. Remember, we used that in the mountain. So we're going to take that fairly thick with a small brush. And we're going to go in and add that to the wing. Nice. See, that's going to be nice and bright and really stand out from the background. And that's what we want. And then we can add a little bit of yellow to that color. And we can do its head. I just think that was kind of it's kind of pretty with a little bit more yellow in it. It's just slightly brighter. And then I'm going to grab the burnt sienna, which is that reddish brown. And I'm doing this with a small brush. This is the only thing that's in real sharp detail here on the front of the card. That's how we build our contrast. That's how we make things have a little bit more importance when we're when we're stamping, when we're painting. And paint the feet that same color. I'm also going to do this little area around the eye with that same brown. And you can see what I mean about flow. These uh, student colors, they don't want to run into the colors next to them. So it's kind of easier to color like a more detailed image like this. And now I'm just going to go in with that. Um, I'm going to go in with a darker blue this time. I am going with a phthalo blue. It's also called intense blue. It's just basically, it's very similar to that cerulean color. It's kind of like that cerulean color without the white basically. 
it's a, it's a green based slightly green leaning blue and we're just going to fill in this area here and that's our little pop of color because I want the bird to stand out it's okay that I'm using this color that I haven't used anywhere else and we'll do these little under wings that same color a little bit darker maybe and really, I mean, that's all there is to it. You don't have to have it perfect. I think a lot of people think that when they go to work on a watercolor card that it's got to be perfect. It does not. If you're And if you're having an issue where you feel like your painting is just too controlled and too tight and you don't like the way it looks and you want it to loosen up, then go ahead, use a big brush like this. You know, just dab on that color. Do these light washes. It's going to be pretty because you have those pretty designs underneath. The, that work's all done. You did all that work in the first step, so you don't have to worry about that when you're painting. So you can let it sploop over the edges and let it blend into the background and give you some really, really cool effects. And you know, dab in some darker colors if you want to. Dab in some yellows in the middle if you want to. It's completely up to you. I can use yellow ochre in the middle, or I can use some of that lemon that I used in the bird towards the center. Keep it easy, keep it fun, enjoy it, really. But really, that's all there is to it. Just finish up filling in, kind of like a coloring book, and then when you're all done, it's going to look like this. And just fold it up, and you can do a little bit of accent painting on your envelope if you want to, nothing fancy. And uh, you've got a wonderful card that you can mail off to somebody that won't take extra postage, but really is a wow. When they open that up and they're like, wow, you know, that's going to sit on their table like this or on their uh, mantle, and it's going to have that beautiful three-dimensional look, and it really doesn't take a lot of time or supplies to make. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Please check out our sponsor, artneco.com. I will have a list in the video description with links to all the stamp, set I, stamp sets that I used. It was just two sets, and um, they're very versatile stamps that you could use for a lot of different things, and I like stamps like that, especially if you're a beginner, because you can do happy birthday, you can do thinking of you, you can do thank you, you can do happy anniversary, you can do so many different um, events, happy birthday, whatever, with simple stamps like this. And um, yeah, I thank them for their support. I thank you for your support. And until next time, happy crafting.